up, everybody? Welcome back. I hold shift here. And wow, we have got a lot of things to go over. Almost like this hoodie going over me. Do you know this hoodie? Actually, I've had this since high school. This is my baseball sweatshirt from my sophomore year of high school. Got some nice paint stain on it. Real attractive, I know, right? Uh, okay. Anyway, let's get back into it. We've got a long show today. We'll try to make it snappy for you, though. We got to go over to the national qualifiers, which just happened. The 2K leaderboards as they now kind of show themselves although the north american one's kind of up for bait as far as how accurate it is as of cmg and we got to go over to the cmg tournament the checkmate gaming tournament if you missed it the pro down showdown twenty five hundred dollar things all the stuff all the stuff let's start with the national qualifiers the way that the qualifiers work as far as i understand it is that these teams that go through the national qualifiers will get an automatic invite to the open bracket with, I'm assuming some kind of seating in place. I, I don't know exactly how it goes. Someone will probably tell me how exactly how it works. And if you do know, please leave a comment so I can clarify and we can make sure we got it all straight. But it went through a number of regions, starting off with Australia first and foremost. Obsidian, who is one of the you know top five teams, we'll say in the APAC region, would defeat ARM, which is also a top four team. They've actually been kind of toggling three and four in the 2K. So Obsidian, they win that set three one after going through that championship bracket as you see it there very nicely done we'll switch over to japan a very under we'll say uh underdeveloped region when it comes to call of duty although their teams were very close to one another kind of sort of rush would defeat cyclops as far as we get the report of three to nothing and rush is a team in the apac that isn't really breaking the top 12 yet so if that kind of puts in perspective where Japan is at the moment. Let's switch over to uh, Italy, Italia. Idomina will defeat Vincere at a 3-0 scoreline. Not bad as they move through their way of the bracket, making their way in. And then Germany, this was actually a pretty good one. The top 32 legends, they are a team that's usually in the top 15 leaderboard-wise for the 2Ks, would defeat the BNL All-Stars. Another team that's usually close to, we'll say, the top 16 more often than not in the 2K leaderboards. And then over to Spain, this was a fun one. Heretics, who have uh, really put themselves into the limelight over there in the European region, defeat the Movie Star Riders at a scoreline of 3 nothing. These two teams match up against each other all the time. Uh, not only just in this tournament, but also in the 2Ks. They seem like they always get a bracket that puts them up against one another. We'll see that more later. And then over to France. The French qualifiers are actually the team of Atlas and Whalers and company. They would defeat Supremacy, but it, it would take them two sets of the best of five. Supremacy would find the first, and then France qualifiers will win the second. We get It's reported as 0-3-3-0. I imagine those are probably closer than that, but who knows. Over to the United Kingdom, Team Sween, one of the top teams in Europe, would defeat Celebrity Hunted. And uh, we'll talk more about that team later because they do have a couple of names on their team. Uh, Celebrity Hunted did. They would be able to win that one out. Does Team Sween? They're also really up there in the 2K leaderboard as well. But they would take this and get themselves their qualifying spot just by winning the second best of five. Over into the North American region, we'll jump over to Canada, where Morituri would defeat what is claimed as Team Canada. It was kind of a mishmash of players kind of sitting outside the top 16. But they'll finally get themselves some success, and they'll be represented at Vegas. And then in the United States, Midnight. We'll talk more about that org as we go on. They defeated Reunited in Midnight, who was previously known as the Gold Bullets. Uh, they would eventually come through, and, and they take that one I won't say super convincingly, but they took it convincingly. This team has looked really solid lately, and I'm really excited to see where they go from here. Uh, I think this is a team that really could make some waves, as we'll talk more about how they did in the day later. We'll, we'll skip and do it right now. Why don't we? we got a lot of things to go over. I want to keep you hankering to find out what happened. This week. Let's jump over to APAC. First and foremost, taking a look at the leaderboards. Tainted would defeat Mind Freak this time. They've been trading back and forth. But it would be Tainted Minds taking the championship in this 2K. But most notably, keep an eye out for Venom and Throne. Both teams, uh, Throne you saw just a minute ago in the uh, national qualifiers. They got some extra bonus points for finishing in the top four there. And then down to the EU region. I guess up in that instance. If you take a look at it from what last week was to what this week is. You'll see Heretics will actually retain their top spot as they would defeat Reciprocity once again. It was noted that Reciprocity was playing without Zed or Wuskin, two of their obviously mainstay rosters. They would be playing with Petey and Shane this week, and 
had a lot of success, but you could kind of tell the finals was more of a, a lot of fun for us. Uh, we'll just kind of hang out and have ourselves a good time while finishing the top two. Now back over to North America of what you saw last week. Again, uh, don't take, don't read too much into this. As, as you will see when we switch over to what happened this week, the big dogs did not play. They played in the Checkmate Gaming $2,500 tournament. But let's take a look at what did happen in the 2K this week. Team Spacely would defeat Swarley's new team. Very notable. And uh, Swarley would be coming into play with players like Sender, Evasion, Llama God. Uh, they've been playing together for the last couple of weeks. Have not broken out of the top 32 placements yet. This obviously is a much more successful showing for them. And of course, Midnight getting themselves up in the top four once again. A name that will continue to make some pretty big moves. But as you take a look at the leaderboard, this is where things obviously switch up. All the big names didn't have really a chance to play, obviously, because they're playing in their own tournaments, so they don't gain any points here. You're going to see a lot of teams moving up. But most notably, take a look at Team Killa. That's Killa, Legal, Twiz, Supreme Agility, and TCM coming back once again. Accelerate Gaming still holding their spot, even though they did not have the best week ever. Fastball and crew over there. And then that Gold Bullets, now Midnight Esports. That's uh, the combination of Envoy, Godforms, Remedinger, Performal, and uh, Charles are the names that you might recognize from that roster. So they're making some moves up there. Uh, Bloated Otters team that would consist of Parasite. And now uh, with the new roster switching up Exotic with Lacefield, uh, they put themselves in the top eight. But it didn't look so great. I know that they were hoping for more than that considering that the big names obviously were not. They're also noted though as you take a look. Revenge is another org that has been picked up. That is Brack. Demise, Jet Li, some of those guys that might give yourselves you know, some ring of familiarity. And then, again, the big tournament this last week that everyone had their eyes on was this Checkmate Gaming Tournament, the $2,500 Pro Down Showdown, where there were eight teams that were invited, and then eight more that went through qualifiers. There was some controversy about who got invited and who didn't. Team Spacely, mostly a little upset that they didn't earn an invite spot based on their performances from the 2Ks, but is what it is. Let's go back over to the results. You're not going to see it pictured here, but FaZe would actually lose to the E-United kind of trainee team, the B team, uh, the up-and-comers with Simp and Selium and all of them. They looked super good. These kids that are just under 18, after CWL Vegas, we are anticipating that a lot of these players, after they turn 18, will be picked up and sold off by United to other teams. They looked incredible. Of course, they're SND gods because that's all they're able to really play. But their teamwork and communication really paid off nicely against FaZe across the entirety of it. And then most notably, and this is kind of a team that I feel like a lot of players and people out there in the community are sleeping on, is Splice. They would move up into this championship bracket, beating uh, Envy and Luminosity Gaming. And then Optic would, of course, face up against 100 Thieves twice after Splice was not able to quite get past 100 Thieves. Optic would only lose two maps in total the entire tournament. And a lot of these were best. They played best of sevens the entire way through. So out of all of their best of sevens, they only lost two maps. And in the last hard point versus 100 Thieves, how about a 250 to 62 scoreline? Yeah, I said it. You can digest that any way you want. I'm just going to wrap this up in a little pretty package for you guys. Here's the thing about it. I am pretty neutral when it comes to the teams. I don't have any favorites. I don't know enough about all of the background drama and all that to get complicated with my opinion on it. Here's what I see. Optic is playing the game at a level that nobody else is playing it at right now. Online or otherwise, I think this would be a drastic upset to see Optic not win DWL Vegas. Based on their rotations, how they're communicating, how they're working together, my only concern is if they do start to become you know, a little bit danger zone when it comes to possibly being out fragged, this team might start to flip-flop, and you might start to see some of the interconnectivities that are not working so well for, say, 100 Thieves and all of their dialogue, we'll say colorfully, has been going on there. Could still occur with Optic. Very well could. They're still playing with a newer player with TJ. They're trying to kind of get the feel for it, and TJ doesn't talk very much, so you will see. We'll see how it goes, but I, that's the only thing I see happening to really hinder this Optic team, is if they get down early, if they start to get out fragged, if they go on tilt. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen based on how they've responded to some pretty dramatic scrims 
in the past couple of weeks. This team looks super solid. We won't be able to get a full read on where teams are going to be adjusting competitively up until Vegas because there's no 2K this next week. We won't see another one until the 2nd of December. And then if you're out there and you're a community player, make sure you keep an eye out for the NJ Raj uh, and AGN and ETG events that are coming up pretty soon. And of course, all of us will be waiting for CWL Vegas in 1206. December. Why do we do it backwards in the United States? Why don't we do the 6th of December like everybody else in the world? I don't know. These are things I don't know. Things will never change. But that's all I got for you guys today. I'll try to be bringing out some more roster change stuff over the next week since we're not going to have a lot of really to talk about when it comes to the 2K standings. So make sure you keep your eye out if you want to know more about roster changes. And uh, we'll pick ups at this point since roster locks are pretty inevitable with the exception of free agents. So it's been good to have you. It's been a lot of talking, a lot of breakdown. I've been shift. It's been a pleasure having you guys. If you liked the video, make sure you guys subscribe for more. And until next time, we hope that you keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.